Hello and welcome to Writing Linear Equations. Today we're going to look at how to write the equations based on the information we're given, whether we're given two points, uh, a point and the slope, or the slope and the y-intercept. As we start writing linear equations, we're going to do so using two different equations. The first one is the slope-intercept form, which we've learned already. It's y equals mx plus b. But in order to use this form, we need to know these things. We have to know the slope and we have to know the y-intercept. It's very specific. Anything else, we can't use it. The other type of equation we can use is the point slope. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. In order to use this, we have to know the slope, again, which is m, and an ordered pair or a point, x and y, because we need to put, we'll be using that. Uh, the y will be put here, the x will be put here. And then from there, we can simplify that into this equation. And then at that point, we have something very simple to graph with. Let's start by looking at this first example, where we're given m equals 2, or the slope equals 2, and b equals negative 8, or the y-intercept equals negative 8. First thing we want to do is look at what we're given, obviously the, this information. We need to decide which equation will we need. Do we want the slope-intercept form or the point-slope form? Either one can be used uh, in most cases, but in this case, we're given the slope and we're given the y-intercept. So we want to go with this, slope and y-intercept. All we have to do now is just plug in. We have y. We're given the slope is 2, so we'll put that in for m, plus b, which we now know is there. So we end up with y equals 2x minus 8. So given the slope and the y-intercept, we want to use slope-intercept form. We'll look at a second example here, very similar to the first. We are given the slope is 12, y-intercept is 5. So again, we look and think, which equation will we need? Well, like before, there's our slope, there's our y-intercept. We're just going to plug it into that. So given the slope is 12, we'll have y equals 12x plus the y-intercept, which is 5. So we end up with y equals 12x plus 5 an equation that now we could graph if needed be, and we can move on. Next we'll take a look at example three. In this one, we are given a slope of three-fourths, and this time instead of a y-intercept, we're given just a point of negative four one. So again, we need to think about which equation we want to use, slope-intercept or point-slope. Well, we are given slope and a point, so I'm going to suggest we go with point-slope. So we're just going to plug into this equation. We start off with y minus the y value in the ordered pair, which is 1. So y minus 1 equals the slope, 3 fourths, and then x minus the x value, which will be negative 4. So x minus negative 4 means it's going to be x plus 4. And now we can take this equation. Before we want to do, if we want to do anything with it, we need to change it into slope-intercept. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's solve for y. We're going to have y minus 1 equals 3 fourths x plus 3, because 4 thirds, or 4 over 1 times 3 fourths, cancel, giving us 3. And then we can add 1 here, and giving us y equals 3 fourths x plus 4. So given the slope of 3 fourths and the ordered pair negative 4 1 we have we get an equation y equals 3 fourths x plus 4. Now we'll move on to example 4 where we're given a, same, a similar situation we have a slope of 3 and an ordered pair of 6 negative 2 so again we'll just think about what equation we need slope intercept or point slope uh, well we have the slope we have a point so again we're going to use this one so let's go ahead and plug in the information we have We'll have y minus the y value, which is negative 2, which makes this plus 2, equals the slope of 3 times x minus the x value, which is 6. And now we can simplify this. y plus 2 equals 3x minus 18. After we distribute, we subtract the 2, and we have y equals 3x minus 20. So given slope of 3 and an ordered pair of 6, negative 2, that will give us the equation y equals 3x minus 20. 
For this example, we're given an ordered pair of 310 and an ordered pair of 14. So no slope is given here. Well, so let's look at which equation will we need. Slope intercept requires slope and the intercept, which we don't have either. Point slope requires point and the slope, which we only have the point. So what can we do? Well, think about it. If we have two points, that allows us to go ahead and find the slope. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this equation and the two ordered pairs we have to go ahead and see if we can get the slope. So I'm going to go 10 minus 4 over 3 minus 1. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. 3 minus 1 gives me 2. And I get a slope of 3. So now I have an ordered pair, another ordered pair, but I also have the slope. So I'm going to take this information and I'm going to go ahead and use the point slope uh, equation. Now the good thing is when I do this, I have more material than I need. I'm going to, just, I'm going to use the slope. That's obvious. Then I'm going to pick a point. And it doesn't matter which point you use. Either point you choose will give you the same equation. Okay, so I'll start by using uh, the second one just because it's got smaller numbers. And I'll go y minus 4 equals 3 times x minus 1. If I simplify this out, I'm going to have y minus 4 equals 3x minus 3. I can add the 4 and I get y equals 3x plus 1. As I said earlier, it doesn't matter which point that you use. Now earlier we found that here the slope is 3. So let's try it this time. Instead of using this equation, or this point, let's use this one. We'll have y minus 10 equals 3 times x minus 3. We simplify that. It's going to give us y minus 10 equals 3x minus 9. If I add the 10, that gives me y equals 3x plus 1. The same thing I got before. So as you can see, it doesn't matter. You can either use this point or this point. It's up to you. Um, the wisest thing to do is look at it and see which one's going to be easier for you. It, or which one will keep away from fractions, which one stay away from uh, negatives. It's up to you. You choose. Either one works. You make it easier on yourself. For this example, we again have two points. So let's take a look at it. What are we going to need? Well, first one calls for slope and intercept. Doesn't appear we have that unless we look real carefully. Now notice 0, 5, and 6, 0. They both contain zeros. And as we learned in the last few lessons, when uh, the intercepts both contain zeros. So in this case, we have 0, 5, which is the y-intercept, and we have 6, 0, which is the x-intercept. So in effect, we actually do have one of these points. We do have the, the, the intercept. So now we really do have a choice. We can use it either way. Uh, but either way, we're going to have to find the slope. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to go 5 minus 0, and then 0 minus 6, which gives me 5 over negative 6. So therefore, I have a slope of negative 5 sixths. Now at this point, I can go straight here. Okay, I know the slope, and I know the intercept. So I can just plug it in like this. y equals negative 5 sixths x, and then plus 5. And I have an equation. But let's go ahead and test it here just to see how it would have worked either way. If, I, if I'd used the point slope form, I would have gone one, y minus, eh, let's go y minus um, 5 equals negative 5 sixths x, or 5 sixths x minus 0. Okay, so I get y minus 5 equals negative 5 sixths x, and negative 5 sixths times 0 is 0, so let's just go ahead and put it here, plus 0. I'm then going to add the 5. And that gives me y equals negative 5 sixths x plus 5. The same thing I got here. So either way, pay attention. Sometimes the points you get are going to be y-intercept or x-intercept. And here we have the y-intercept and x. When that happens, you have your choice. Uh, this is probably easiest to use the slope-intercept, but you get the same thing with the point slope. The idea about all of these uh, equations that we've done today is to have options to be able to look at what you're given and then decide what is the option you'd like to choose. 
Let's do a quick review of what we've talked about today. Based on what you're given, you're going to make different choices for how you write your equation. If you're given the slope and the y-intercept, you want to use the slope-intercept form because the slope-intercept form requires you to have slope and the y-intercept. If you're given a slope and only one point that isn't the y-intercept, you want to use point slope. That requires the slope here and the ordered pair here. And finally, if you're given two points, neither of them being the, the y-intercept, then you want to use the slope formula using those two points to find the slope and then use point slope equation here. All of them you want to then eventually work out or simplify until you get it into the uh, point slope form so you have something that can be easily graphed. Finally, don't forget the question of the day. Make sure you write something down. Make sure you have a good question. Come in, ask it. Make sure you get it answered.